Hey everybody, welcome back to Illyria as we try to continue to stop them from killing Shakespeare. Okie doke. So I think we were just in the middle of bidding. We just put bids down on the first ones. And now we're putting bids down on the intel. Now by the way, uh, sharp-eyed viewers may notice that, hey, it looks like red cards are supposed to come over here. And blue cards are supposed to come over here. And in fact, you're right. That's the way the board is supposed to be set up. But I found it's better to put them this way. So that is kind of like a little memory aid. Hey, we bid over here, then we bid over here, then we bid over here, as opposed to bid here, then here, then here. It's just kind of a goofball layout that I don't quite understand. It seems like the position of the cards is completely inconsistent with the actual order of game events. So anyway, we are now going to put bids down for trying to grab these intel cards. And we know there's one map, one letter, and then whatever these other ones are, we don't know. They could be additional Iago cards, like the one that's already on display, or they could be Jester cards, which are super powerful wild cards and can do all kinds of stuff. But anyway, I'm still the first player, so i got to place my first bid. And now, oh, actually, I just, yeah, right. So, and I've already, I'm trying to remember, I think I, this was a eight. So I've already got my eight, so I'm going to get my action card. So now, well, here's the thing. I don't know what these are, but I do know there's an Iago card over here, and I am worried about ending up getting that. So, with my remaining bid token options, I could, let's see here. Well, the highest I can possibly bid is seven. And if Jen can bid an eight, she would be able to outbid me over here. And I know Jen wants to bid an eight so that she can score that as well. So I'm a bit nervous. Although, you know, again, I was talking about that whole bluff thing. You know, I could make my bid over here be a four, and a zero for these, and then I would hope that Jen would get scared away thinking that I'm bidding a four and a four, <clears throat> because then she probably wouldn't want to go for it because she knows she wouldn't be able to beat me because her five has already been used up. Actually, strictly speaking, it probably would have been smarter for me to have put this four over here, this zero over here. So I bid four, and that way I could actually bid the full eight over there and guarantee not get the Iago. So let's say I had done that. And from Jen's perspective, it wasn't, I mean, she had no idea what this was. And I know she's with that now. So anyway, we're on to the second thing. So now, I've, I'm going to save these two fours for the third place over here where there's the Ago. So for the other one, I will put a three, and the other one is secretly a three, so I'm bidding six over there. So for Jen to get that, she'd have to go with a seven. All right, so now Jen gets to bid over here. And now Jen can just easily see, my five is gone. So Jen knows the highest this could possibly be is a seven. Um, because my five, we each have only one five. And so I've got a three on display. So she's pretty confident when she slaps her blank and her four down here. And I got to assume she's probably put two fours down. And now I'm going to go on to the last one. And I'm going to go on ahead and put a, a four and a blank down there. And now this is the one Jen's very nervous about. See, she, she's only got two left. She's got a four and a four. And she's got to assume that this is a four as well. And so if she ties me, I will win the tie because I'm Falstaff or Falstaff. And she'll end up losing a point thanks to Iago. But this could be um, my four, four over here, in which case this would be a four and something else. And Jen could beat it with her four, four if she wants to throw it down there. But it's a gamble. Is she going to do it? I don't think she's going to. I think she's just going to pass on bidding on this, which means two of her time tokens effectively were wasted. Although, you know, she can afford... And the thing is, you know, her weakness of troops, having a hard time getting troops, she does need more troop cards to be able to do much of anything. So I think she's willing to take the risk. She's hoping that this is, that this is not my other four, that my other four is over here. But she can't really know for sure. And so we've uh, placed all our bids. And so I have, of both of us, one of my time tokens I did not use anywhere. It's just, it's wasted now. I might as well have banked it earlier, but it's too late for that. I can't use it for anything. It's just gone and out. Whereas Jen successfully used all of her time tokens here on the wheel, over there, and on. All right, anyway, so now we are going to reveal what the other cards were. And it's another Iago. Oh dear, Iago's going to strike twice. Another map and a double troop. And a single troop. Okay, and now we reveal all the bids as well. And bad news for Jen. Oops. Oh yeah, this was her three. Bad news for Jen. I won because it's a tie. Falstaff breaks the ties. So Jen's going to get an Iago over here. But good news for Jen over here. 
Six to eight, she won that one. And over here, I won this one. Okay, so we realize, now we resolve them. Player order doesn't change. I'm first player still, Jen's second player, and that's what she wanted because she wanted to be, um, to have control over the Wheel of Fate so she doesn't get stuck with Iago next turn. So now I come over here. Oh, and this is interesting. We're both gonna get hit with Iago. Jen's gonna get hit with Iago over here. I'm gonna be hit with one over there. Because now, Jen is first. Now, with three or four players, there are three or four cards, and in winning bid order, everybody takes one. In a two-player game, it's special. There's four cards, and each of us is gonna take two. So, since Jen wins, she'll take one, I'll take one, she'll take one, I'll take one. So, what does she want? Well, she's gotta think again about the quest she's gonna do. If she's gonna head over to Prospero Island this round, there are two quests. She would like to do them both. So she needs a letter and a scroll. Okay. So I think she'll grab the letter first. All right, and so now me, I'll definitely take a map or a scroll. I think they're actually called scrolls. But anyway, so I'll take a map. I, I was welcome. Jen will take the other one, and then boom, I just got stuck with the other. I have to take it. And there, you know, there's no getting around. Now, if, say, I hadn't bid at all here, Jen would have taken two, one of them would have been gone, and Iago would have struck regardless. The fact that he was drawn from this deck means he's going to strike no matter what. But I was forced. He struck through me. So what that means is he comes into my hand. I lose a point because of his dastardly way. So I just dropped a point. And now, from my hand immediately, he comes over here to the Iago stack where he starts to build up. And the more Iagos there are over here, the tougher things get for us. If there are ever, if we ever put a fourth stack down, the uh, Search for Shakespeare moves forward, and then we, we don't put the fourth one down. If we're ever gonna put a fourth one down, we don't put it down. Instead of putting a fourth one on the thing, we move Shakespeare forward. Also, the more Iago cards here, there are here, the more it costs to stop events. So having Iago stick around is very, very bad news. But anyway, so that was that. And now I come over here, I won, or at least I broke the tie. So I'll take a double, and Jen will take a double, or Viola will take a double. I'll take this single, and Jen just got hit with an Iago as well. So she just lost a point. And she's back at start at her five, and I'm at six. Okay, right, so that was it for the bidding phase, all done. And now, finally, everybody's been very, very patient, we finally move on to the actions. Okie doke. So, and the way this is going to work is, I'll do an action, Jen will, I will, Jen will, I will, Jen will, I will, Jen will. We each, you know, take turns doing four. And we use these little markers up here to keep track of how many we've done. So I'm first player. I will move this over here to indicate I'm doing my first action. Now there are four actions you can choose between. You can complete a quest if you're standing in the right place and you have what you need to get it done. You can put one of your influence cubes where you are. So I'm here over here, I'm gonna see if I want it. I, and each round you have up to two that you could place. So I could place one and I am starting to fight Richard for influence in Messaline. You can move, you can make two influence moves. If I've got influence say, you know, I, I happen to have a couple over here and I've got one over here and one over here, let's say. I could, if I wanted to, I can make two influence moves. I could move this one from here to here and then I could move this one from here to here if I wanted or I can move it from here to here. Um, or actually, yeah, if they were like this, I could, do, I could move from here to here and then I would almost have taken over. So you can move your influence around from region to region, up to two of them. So you can move one, two spaces or two, one space. Or you can rest, which means you refill two energy without having to use your time. Now remember, I wanted to do some quests. I wanted to get this Avon quest done, but here's the problem. I'm not in Avon. In addition to the four core actions you can do, which is complete a quest, um, put down influence, move influence around, or rest, in addition to those, uh, that core action, I'm gonna do one of those actions, I can also do bonus actions. I can move as many times as I want, as long as I have energy to spend. I can trade cards with another player. So if Jen has cards I need, we could engage in a trade and she could give me some, I give her some, or maybe she could just donate some to the cause because this is a semi-co-op game after all, et cetera, et cetera. What else can we do? We can, um, right, we can trade stuff, we can move, that's the important thing. We can, oh right, if we have black cubes, we can trade them for action cards, right. Um, yeah. The, yeah, but the main thing is, the main thing we're going to be doing, in addition to the core action, is moving. I want to get over here to Avon, 
Because when I get, you know, and so to do it, it would cost me one, two, three. I would have to spend three energy. One, two, three. Oh dear. And then I don't have any energy. And I need energy. Oh no. Oh my. Wow. I was a big fat idiot. Oh wait. Yes. Oh no. Oh my goodness. This is a big problem. I totally forgot the fact. All right. To complete this, I need, um, I need time, which I did bank. And I need two energy. I started with four, and I've only and to move over here to Avon it's going to cost me one, two, three. So I'm not going to have enough energy to get this quest done. Oh dear. Oh shoot. Now what can I do about that? It's too late. Um, if I had been smart earlier, particularly because I banked, I banked a two when I really only needed to bank a one. So if I'd been smart earlier, remember how I had this one time left over? If during the planning phase I hadn't been an idiot and I had chosen to use this to increase my energy, so say I'd done that, so I, just, I, I, so I wasn't a dummy, I got some more energy and banked it so I could do Avon. Right, so I'm gonna do Avon now. My first action is, first of all, for free, I will move. One, two, three. So my energy goes down, one, two, three. And I'm in Avon. And the core action I'm gonna do here is complete the quest. This requires one time which I previously banked, so that's good. It requires one scroll, or one letter, which I have, so that just gets discarded. And it requires two energy. So there's um, one, two. Oh crap, I still don't have enough. Oh my gosh, wow. I am really messed up here. All right, hold on a second. So let's say I had still bumped myself up but I do not have enough energy. Oh, I know why. It's because I had mixed up. I kept thinking this was me and I could get to Avon really quick. I have to move one, two, three as opposed to one, two. That's why I had it wrong. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Let's see. Well, there is this one over here in Arden. And in fact, actually, I guess I'm gonna do this quest instead because I do have enough. Right, so from here, I'm gonna, my first action is still gonna be do a quest. I will move one, two over to Arden. That cost me one, two energy. And now I'm gonna complete Good Deeds Act Three. A cursed hole. A cursed, a cursedly bold bear is relentless in its pursuit of any who adventure near the forest of Arden. Find this monster and make it a warm coat. So I moved for free because you can all. Well, I, I moved, which costs me energy because you can always move as many times as you want as long as you have energy. And now I'm going to complete this quest. It costs me one more energy. It costs me a troop. So it didn't actually cost me this scroll, and it costs me a map which I just so happen to have. All right. So, and I have completed this quest. My reward, I get one action card and I get to swap one of Richard's influence cubes, which means I take one of my own, remove one of his and put one of mine down. So we're starting to reclaim the Forest of Arden. Crap, I totally forgot. During the bidding, oh shoot, this might have changed everything. During the bidding, when I revealed this, I revealed, hey, I, hit, I did four, which was the target, which meant I, at that point, got an action card, which was, oh my gosh, two time. Although I didn't need the time, but this means I won't have to bank time later because I've got time already banked. And then when Jen got over here, now I can't complete the, uh, the intrigue thing a second time, but Jen did it, so she got an action card as well, which was a free, oh wow, that's very nice. So Jen can do five actions in one round, okay. So I forgot to do that when we were finishing the bids. Oopsie doops. But anyway, so my first of four actions was I'm, I spent a lot of energy to move over here and then I completed this quest. Okay, and I got to draw uh, another action card, which I will do now. And it's a jester. Oh, now this is the most valuable card in the game. It can do all kinds of stuff. Wow, it can be used as a wild card for any other item. It can completely refill your energy. It can remove an Iago card to, you know, stop, um, to help us there. It's worth a victory point if you never use it over the course of the game. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of stuff it can do. They're very, very powerful. But anyway, so my first action was I did a bunch of movement and then completed a quest. And so I claim this. Right, so I drew my card, I put my, I, I swapped one of Richard's out for one of mine, and now this, there are points to be had for whoever has completed the most quests at the end of the game, where, you know, actually two times, in the, in the end of round three and then the end of round six. Whoever has done the most quests gets two points in a two-player game, and whoever, and the other player gets none. So, I'm on my way to scoring bonus points for having completed more quests than Jen. That was my first action. Now, Jen is going to do her first of four actions, which is... 
She's gonna, she's gonna do like I did. She's gonna move. Um, but remember, since she's a pirate, she can move from any region to any other region on the board in one action. Me, I had to walk all the way over there. Cost a lot of energy. Jen spends one energy immediately from Bohemia to the island of Prospero. So that only spent one energy. And now the action she's gonna do here, there's these quests she wants to do. Let's see. And she's got everything she needs, right? She still has an energy. She has a letter. Oh, all right. Well, okay, no, she's not gonna do a quest. The first thing she's gonna do is, she, her first action was, she moved over here, you can always move as many times as you want, but her first action will be to add some influence to the island of Prospero. So, and she needs to do that because she needs to have influence on Prospero before she starts working on this quest. So that was her first action. Now it's my second of four actions. And, hmm, now I have this guy. I could use this to refill all my energy, and then what well, I have? One, two, three, four. So I'd be all the way up here, and it'd be um, one, two, three, four. And I would have uh, four, one, two, and I would have enough to complete that Avon quest after all. Oh wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, because I've still got, because I have the two energy. I've still got the time. Wow, that's great. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Now this is kind of selfish. This is me chasing after a quest as fast as I can because this quest is worth points. But really, the, probably the best use for this right now would be for me to discard it and capture one of the Iago cards because these are really gonna hurt us in round two when we have to resolve whatever this event is. The more Iago cards here, the more expensive in time it, comes to, it becomes to resolve this event. So I could save it, or you know, I could use this right now anytime I want basically. Clara Diago. Let's see, what are, let me look at the list of everything the gesture cards can do. They can, there are so many things. Get an Iago card, uh, you act as a wild card when you're completing a quest, refill your energy to max, reverse the Wheel of Fortune. Remember how I was mentioning Jen could spend time to move it forward? If you have a gesture, you can move it backwards. And oh yeah, you can also use a gesture card to move the quill back. And so, obviously, it has several selfless uses that will help everybody, but I'm going to be a bit selfish and I'm going to use it for myself. I'm going to take this and discard it to completely refill my energy. And now, for my second action, I'm going to move one, two, three, four, which cost me one, two, three, four. And now I'm in Avon and I'm going to be able to complete this mission. Now, this requires two more energy one, two. It requires that letter. And it requires one bank time, which remember I did bank this, and so I've just completed my second quest. And my reward is I get a victory point, so I'm back up to seven again, and I get to place an influence cube in Avon. So I'm starting to spread my influence around. Okay, and so I've completed two quests. Now it's Jen's second action, and she's there over here in Prospero. Now her first action was. She, uh, she got the influence, now she can complete this. The requirements for this quest are, you have one influence in that region, which Jen now does. She has to spend one energy and her letter. There's her energy and her letter. And she just completed this quest, which gave her a point and allows her to remove one Richard token. And so that's pretty nice. And now it's my turn again. I've only got two more actions. Right. Now there's only one quest left. I can't do this quest, because remember, my limit, I, I'm afraid of water, so I can't go to Prospero. So I think, for my next action, I'll just start spreading some influence. Since I'm here in Avon, I'll put another influence down. And so I'm starting to work on building the rebellion here in Avon, so we can claim this region back from evil King Richard. All right, and I, because I have no energy, so I can't go anywhere, as I'm completely exhausted. I'll have to deal with that later. Right, so that was my third action. Now Jen's third action, she is still on Prospero, so she's going to complete Prospero's Island Act 2. A rare book has been found on the Isle of Prospero. Lady Macbeth seeks its power for her own. She must not have it. So I'm going to... Jen happens to have this map, which she got during the uh, bidding phase. And she needs to spend... Now remember, she needs to spend three troops, because she always has to spend one more. She happens to have exactly what she needs. And so she completed this. And this allows her to put another influence marker here and draw another action card. Now this is a card she can use whenever she wants. Now this is a completely selfless card. She can't use it to her own benefit, but she can use it to increase the hope anywhere in the world anytime she wants to. So that could be a real life-saving card when we're down. All right, and so now I've got one more action. And you know what? I've got one more influence I could spread, so I'll do that again. And we're really starting to make a push on Avon. 
And Jen has one more action. And what the heck, she'll put her last influence over here. And so, as you can see, we're making good progress. I've got influence in a couple places. Jen's got one. We both completed two quests, and neither of us hit this one. Although it's interesting, Jen's on Prospero. Next round, we might coordinate our moves so that if I am the player standing in Messaline and Jen is in Prospero, we could work together to complete this quest. I would get all these rewards. Whenever somebody assists in a quest, just by standing in the right place at the right time, they get two victory points and another ac oh, excuse me, action card. But anyway, so I'm done. I've done my four actions. Now Jen could do a fifth action because she's got this plus one action, but she's going to save that for later. Because she, I mean, what else is she going to do? There, she can't complete this quest by herself. Could she? No, she doesn't have the letter. Yeah, she doesn't have any of the stuff she needs. So she can't possibly complete that quest. So I think she's going to hold on to that extra. All right. And so in Prospero Island, it's three of, um, all right, sorry. It's, uh, see, this is a real problem. I, yeah, this is one of Jen's. Let's use one of her better ones. Unfortunately, a lot of the blue tokens and the black tokens are almost exactly the same. They're very, very difficult to tell apart. Very rapid production. I'll be talking a bit about that in my final thoughts. Anyway, yeah. So Jen's got three and um, Richard's got three. It's three to five up here. It's one to six up here. Okay, so that was it. We are all done with all of our actions. And now after the action phase is over, there's a very quick little step where we check to see if Richard can take back any fortresses that we had destroyed. But so far we have destroyed no fortresses, so we can skip that right now. That would just be something that comes up later. And now, the last thing you do in a round is scoring. If it's the end of round three or the end of round six, we would score, but it's not. We're at the end of round one, so that's it. We have finished the first of six rounds. Now, let's just go through one more round so you can start seeing some more stuff. What happens during prep? First of all, well, we advance to round two, and you can see the round marker is showing us the combination of quests that are going to come out. In the first round, it was four easy and one hard quest. Now it's going to be three easy and two hard. And, and, and the, the ratio changes over the course game. Fewer and fewer easy quests come out, and more and more hard quests come out the further we go into the game. So anyway, we're in round two. The Wheel of Fortune rotates one. And so now Jen's looking down the barrel of getting betrayed by Iago. But since she's last in turn order, she'll be able to spend some time to prevent that from happening. All right? Now, um, if anybody, if we had actually captured any regions, which is to say we had had more influence than Richard in a region, we would have liberated that region and we'd get these rewards. And, you know, like this reward would let me draw, if I had this reward, it would let me draw a map or a letter right now. If anybody had this reward, it would let them immediately draw an action card and so on. But so far, nobody has any of those, so we skip that. All righty. Now, if uh, we had, if we... When we actually successfully take over a region, what happens is we end up capturing the black tokens of King Richard. And right now, during prep, if we wanted to, we could, if we had three black tokens of King Richard, we could convert them into glory points, which are worth victory points at the middle and end scoring rounds. But as it stands right now, both Jen and I focused entirely on quests, and so we didn't actually get any of these black uh, tokens, so we can't do that. Now then, um, we get all our time tokens back, which we used from the last turn. Because we're, you know, we, we, we're in month two, we're going to have 30 days, once again, 30 full days, to you know, save the land. So let's get all our tokens back. Urgh. There we go. And Jens. Of course, this is much quicker with more than one player. It may look like it's taking forever, but it's really not. All right, there we go. And let's see, oh, Jen. Jen had some over here. Right, so we get all our tokens back. And now, um, right, we, so the turn order comes back. I'm still first player. Those are my four actions. Those are Jen's four actions. And we reduce hope. Every region, and so far, Jen and I, we didn't actually rescue free any regions. Now, this one's very close. Jen's got three, King Richard has three. As soon as there's one more influence of either Jen's or mine, we will defeat Richard and we'll kick him out of there. But as it is, we didn't kick him out, so every region in the game is going to despair and lose hope because they're all still occupied. None of them have been liberated. So this goes from four to three, from four to three, from five to four, from four to three, from six to five, from six to five, from six to five, and from seven 
to six. All right, so that's a, that's a timer. That's not looking good for us. So, and as you can see, I mean, these ones are in a few more rounds, we'll be in big trouble. So we reduce hope, um, right, everybody gets two more influence cubes, because every round during the action phase, the most influence cubes you can put on the map is two. So we re-mark that by putting a couple more of them on here, you know, at the top. All right, so everybody gets their influence cubes back. Uh, all right, oh, we have to put new cards out. So remember, it's three easies and two hards. So we draw three easies. Oh, oh, wait, before we do that, though, any quest that we're not finished, right, Jen and I, we finished four of the five quests. We didn't finish Edmund, Act 3. Any cards that are still out, slide all the way over. And so now this is a high-priority quest. If we don't get this quest finished this round, the quill is going to move one step closer, and we're that much closer to losing the game because Shakespeare is found and killed. So that's now a new problem. But in addition to this, we're going to put out new quests. One or two easy ones, no, three easy ones. Uh, Leonardo, Act One. Prospero's Island, Act One. And Philip, Act Two. And two hard ones. Puck, Act Two. And Rebellion Act 3. And you can see, yeah, there's another one that requires two people uh, to be in different places. This one, oh yeah, both of these, uh, both requires to be, all these hard ones do. And you can see they require a lot more resources, but the rewards are much greater as well. Um, but and if we don't come together and work together to solve these, we're going to start, you know, hastening towards our doom. Because every time we don't finish the quest, this is a quest we've got to finish or else Shakespeare's in danger. So anyway... So, oh, we have to put out other stuff. So we put out two more troops face down and two face up. There's, or I'm sorry, these aren't troops. These are the intel. Oh my gosh, a jester. There's going to be some very, very high bidding over there. Let's see. And now two blank down for the intel and two face up. And another Iago. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's a lot of Iagos that we've been getting hit with right in front. I mean, you could get lucky and go for quite a while with no Iagos. And unfortunately, I was wasteful. I could have used this jester to clear one of those Iagos out, but I used it for my own benefit to complete another quest. Although, you know, it was good for us, too, because it got me over here, and we're almost about to liberate um, Avon, so that's not bad. Right, let's see. Anything else? Restock the quests. Restock. Right, so that's it. Prep is done, and now it's time for our second event. Cry Havoc. In the madness. It is madness. Brother turns upon brother, sister upon sister. All in the name of whether Shakespeare used the quill for good or ill. Now, first of all, oh, um, so King Richard is not going to move. So that's good. We at least don't have to worry about any despair coming from him. But Lady Macbeth does. She moves over here to Cawdor. And, and she, we got lucky. She, if she moved over to Avon, there'd be a very good chance I'd lose some of my influence or Jen would lose some of hers. But instead, she moved over to Cawdor and just added one. So that was nice and simple. And now the event itself is, troop cards are not available for purchase during the bidding phase. Oh no! Oh, well actually, that's not so bad, because if we tried to buy any of these, we'd get an Iago. So that means, um, that means nobody can recruit troops if this event happens. Um, also, Othello may take a troop card from the bidding track for free. So now this is one of those interesting examples. I mean, everybody would have to work together and you know, pony up 11, which isn't that bad so that we could get more troops. But Othello gets to, because uh, he's a general in the army, he gets to recruit a troop anyway, whether we succeed at this or not. So if as a group, we were trying to decide, right, are we gonna put pony up time to get rid of this event? And, you know, and there's no quill here, so we don't have to worry about the track moving forward. Uh, the Othello player might say, you know what, I'm not giving any of my time. In fact, I hope the event fails, because then he's the one who... But again, that's if you're thinking selfishly. If you're thinking heroically, well, of course we want to prevent this so that we can get more troops to aid in our cause to complete these quests. Because look at these quests. We need a troop over there. Need a troop there. Need three troops. Need four troops. We need troops. So to, um, take an one of our six rounds, not being able to get more troops could be devastating. But on the flip side, there's an Iago card over here. So if there was one turn where we weren't going to get troops, this would be a good one. Because oh, Don't get me wrong. The Iago card is going to go into place regardless. But at least nobody would take a, uh, lose a victory point for it coming out if they ended up taking it. So anyway, that's Cry Havoc. And now, this would cost 11. But unfortunately, there's two Iago cards out as well. And for every Iago card that is out, um, we have to pay an additional four. So instead of 11, we have to pay 19. 
because of the two Iagos. The more Iagos you have here, it gets very, very expensive. In a two-player game, let me just double check this. In a two-player game, every Iago is plus four. So that's 8 plus 11, 19. And now, once again, we have to start thinking and planning and discussing and coordinating. Are we going to spend the 19 points, or I'm sorry, the 19 time from our personal time that we need to, to ensure that cry havoc doesn't happen so we can recruit more troops? If we don't recruit more troops, we're going to be in big trouble if these quests don't get done. So I think that's a strong argument to be made. So, if it's 19 total, that means each of us basically has to do 10, or one of us has to do 10, one of us has to do 9. And so, and now, if we, so we've agreed, yes, we're going to do this, and then, you know, if, depending on how you want to play, you could go so far as say, okay, and everybody commit to how much you're actually going to do, but then they could still do whatever they want. Um, Jen and I found we just kind of say, oh yeah, let's do this, let's just kind of vaguely split it, and then we can leave it kind of vague and we see what everybody actually bids. Because remember, if we succeed at this, whoever bids the most scores two points. Although if we're tied, I break the tie. It's good to have a special power like that. Hmm, let's see. Well, you know what? I'm just going to go on ahead and bid 10. But I don't want to give up my 5 like I did last turn because there were many... Let's see. So how would I do 10? I think I would do 10 with maybe a 3, a 3, or a 4, a 3, 7, a 2, and a 1. Maybe something like that. Yeah. So let's say this is me. So that's my bid, and now let's see what Jen is going to do. Right. See, because you got to be thinking not only about how much time you're going to spend for this, but remember, you need to, I mean, we both need a lot of time because I'm completely exhausted um, from that run all the way across the world like that. That was pretty rough. I'm just going to have to stay in Avon unless I set some time aside to rest. I need four to go one. I need eight to go two. So I might use a lot of my time just resting up. And if that's the case, does it make sense? If I'm not going to be able to do much anyway, does it make sense for me to give up so much time towards stopping this when I need to spend time on resting? Maybe I shouldn't bid 10. <sighs> Whereas Jen, you know, she's still got energy, so she doesn't need to spend as much energy over here. And remember, she can run around. Oh, here's another one on Prospero Island right there. She just needs a little bit of time. So she already knows she's going to want to go for that. She's already, she doesn't have to do this right now, but she's already thinking she's going to bank this one so she can do that quest right where she is. And then she might rush over here, which will cost her one energy, and complete that quest. But that means to be able to complete this quest, she'd have to spend one, two, three, four to get her energy up to here. No, five, because she'll move. So she needs to spend five, six, seven, eight to be able to say, maybe do these quests. But the big thing is we need to be discussing how are we gonna get this quest done? Because maybe we don't have enough time to complete this quest that's gonna hurt us and have enough time to you know, solve the Cry Havoc quest as well. Let's see, now Jen's on Prospero. She doesn't have to spend any time there, but I would have to move and I can't. It's gonna cost me one, two energy to get down there. And then, and wow, to complete this quest, I need to spend two energy to get there and I'd have to spend two energy to do it, but to even start the quest, I'd have to have my energy up to level three. Wow, that's a big problem. So, to even be able to do this quest, I'd have to spend four, eight, nine, 10, 11. But then I'd have to have 12, 13, 14, 15 to get there. 16, I, I, we fundamentally cannot do this quest. Even if I spent 16 of my time completely resting, we would not have enough for me to be able to move down there because of my slow, fat, um, um, self. So that means I can't help with this, and Jen is going to have to do this by herself. Now, in a two-player, in a three, if we were playing with more players, if no one would help Jen, that's too bad. We just can't be done. In a two-player game, we have a special neutral player that players can call upon in times of trouble. Because, of course, the world is so big, it doesn't get any smaller with less players. So instead, we've got a neutral player we can call out. It costs one energy, and you can put him anywhere. So Jen's going to have to move over here to Messaline, and then spend an energy to move this guy in. And then when Jen's here, so it costs her one energy to move here, two energy to get him out. She needs to be at the star. So that means she has to get all the way up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Jen needs to spend twelve of her time to get the energy back to complete this quest. And if she doesn't complete this quest, right? And she was, I mean, I mean, she was hoping to complete this quest too while she was at it. Although she doesn't have a scroll, but hopefully, so, or I mean, a map, but hopefully, maps will come up there. Oh, but there's the other thing too. There's a Jester card. 
totally forgot about that. If Jen and I can come to an agreement where we say, hey, you know what? Let me win this auction so that I get the gesture card, I could use it to refill my energy again, and then I could run down here, and we'd have an easier time of completing this quest that's gonna hurt us. But Jen's thinking, hey, you know what? I want that gesture card too. Um, you know, because she could certainly, I mean, we need to use those gesture cards over here to take care of the, uh, the auto cards, which Jen is very worried about because it's making th things so expensive. So Jen says to heck with it, you know what, I'm going to get this quest done by myself. Premium. That means she's going to have to spend, I forget what it was, a lot of energy, which means she's going to want to have a lot of energy left over to win this so she can get the gesture card so, she can re so that she can clear the Iagos out. So now she's thinking that she doesn't have enough energy to, time to get, or time to get all this energy back. Although there's another way to get energy back, let's not forget. Once we start doing our actions, one of our actions is rest, which immediately fills us up without having to use any of our time tokens. So, there is an option there as well. Wow. Okay, folks, you know what? I think that is, maybe this is a good place to stop because it gives you a pretty good idea of just how rich and complex the situations are. How much discussion and coordination there needs to be because of, uh, because we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be one step closer. This thing can fill up in a heartbeat. But meanwhile, we're very close to losing Prospero and Messaline. We need to get over to Messaline and Prospero and clear Richard out of these areas so their hope stops falling. But we're so close to um, you know, doing hope here. Now, although, yeah, I really should keep playing so I can show you how a battle works. Ah, <sighs> wow. Okay, you know what, let's say, we are gonna agree, you know what, there's not enough time to finish this cry havoc. We're not gonna do it, we're gonna let it go. No one's gonna buy any troops, it's gonna be fine. We need to spend time getting energy back. So we still have to go ahead and do it. And you know what, I still would like to win the two points. So I am going to pull up my hand and I'll eventually reveal that I'm doing three. And Jen, she will hold out and reveal nothing. She's not spending any time, she's being selfless. Uh, I'm spending three times, so that time is gone. And so I, I only get one point. We failed to complete this. So the person who contributed the most when we failed gets one point. We failed to do this. So nobody can bid over here. These are all off limits. And if Othello were in the game, he could still take one, but say la vie. All right, so that was it for the event. Now we move on to the uh, plotting and we have a seven. So both of us have a target of wanting to hit seven. Then we go on to the Wheel of Fate. Now, Jen's in control of it because she's the last player. She doesn't want to get hit by Iago, so she will definitely spend three time to rotate this one because now, uh, let's see, I get a map and Jen gets another one of these bonus action cards. That's very nice for her. So that was the Wheel of Fortune. Now we get on to the planning. All right, Jen's already banked one because she knows she wants to try to finish this quest before she leaves Prospero. Um, let's see. Are there any quests? All right, so there's two quests. Both of these require my energy. If I rested twice, I have four actions. If I rested one, two, one, two, if I rested twice, I would have enough energy to move down here to Minea and complete one of these quests, which lets me remove two and give me an action or lets me get some energy back. But you know what? I could spend my whole turn just adding more um, resources up here so that I could take Avon. That's really interesting too. Interesting -er by the second. Right. So, do I want to bank any? Let's see, I'm not going to bank that. Or no. Oh, yeah, I am going to bank one. Because if I do move down to Melia after I rest, I can maybe complete this quest as well. And you know what? I need to, uh, to complete both of these quests that are in this region. I need to have a lot of energy. So, I am going to spend, what's it? One, two, three, four. Uh, so that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think I'm going to spend 12. All right, remember, I want to be able to bid with a 7, so I want to save some of these 4s. Um, all right, well, I could do a 5 and a 2, that would be a 7. So if I spend 12 on my energy, um, 4, 8, oh, 9, 10, 11, sorry, not. Um, all right, so let's put this 2 here, a 4 and a 2. So that's 8, 9, 10, oh yeah, no, I right, it was 11, yeah. So I paid 11, so I've got some energy, so I will be able to move down here and do these quests in Luda, or however you pronounce that. All right, so that was me for my planning. Jen, I think she, let's see, does she need anything else banked? Um, nope, she doesn't need any more time, so, but she is gonna get some energy back. Right, and we all do this simultaneously. Jen can see I just spent quite a bit, so I think she'll spend a little bit too. She'll spend a two, and that bumps her up one. 
and she spent a three. That bumps her up one. Let's see now to complete. Let's see where's she moving? She's moving over here. She needs to be at the star. She's going to lose two, so she needs to bump up two more times. But she could rest to bump up two more times. So I think that's going to be fine. So that's all she's spending. And so we're done with our planning, and now we move on to the bidding. Uh, we both banked one because we're each planning on doing a quest. That Wait a minute. Oh shoot. What was Jen planning on? Oh, this is the only quest that needs us to bank time. So Jen did not need to bank this time. So I think she will hold on to this so she has more to bid with. One, two, right. Because you should need to give up another three to go up one more on energy. And she doesn't have any more threes, so she'd have to overpay, and that would be wasteful. <clears throat> All right, so I banked some time. Jen, oh, wait, no, there it is. Right? Yeah, she did need to bank time. Yes, she did. Duh. All right, so there we go. And I'm left over with... Five tokens, Jen's got six, and now we start with the bidding. For first player, first of all, and I, um, I don't think Jen cares so much um, about being last anymore because she made it past Diago, so I think she'd like to go first. And remember, both of us want to bid a seven at least once, so Jen can't bid a seven. She doesn't have any, oh wow. She needs to keep a three to be able to bid a seven, which means she didn't put her energy up anymore, but she could rest through that energy, so if she kept this three, she could have put, given up this four, and that's a bit wasteful, but that's how she got her energy back. All right, so Jen's going to bid seven over here. So she reveals one, and one is secret. And all right, but Actually, I'm sorry. I had to bid first. I had to bid first. Um, oh, and the interesting thing is we can't bid over here. We only have two auctions this round because we didn't finish that event. I forgot about that. So actually, you know what? Jen then had a lot more energy she could do. Let's go on ahead and say she spent another four to get up energy-wise even one more. And I spent another two to get up energy because we can't bid as much as we, because one of our auctions is offline. So we might as well spend more and energize even more. All right, so that's the, all right, but I had to bid. Although now I've set myself up so I can't do a seven. Where did I put all those threes? Uh, let's rethink this here. All right, so I was all the way at the bottom. And if I, right, because I need to keep a three. So that's eight, nine, ten. If I don't put this two here and I put this four here, that's 12. So that's eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so I wasted three fours and I'm wasting some, but that's so I can keep this four and this three so that I can get a bonus card as well. So Jen's bidding high on turn order. Well, right, right, right. I don't think I care about turn order. I'm happy to go last. So I'm just going ahead and what the heck, I'll bid two and nothing, and then Jen bids three and something. Now we come over to the troops, and we want to bid high for this, and I totally forgot about that, but anyway. So I'm gonna bid as high as I can. I'll hide my four and I'll show this five. Jen is gonna bid as high as she can as well, and no one's bidding over here. So there's a zero that Jen never used, and here's a three that I didn't use. Oh, which I could have used to put more See, you can, it's really tricky that you have to lock in your use for time before the bidding happens. But we'll just live with it. I was dumb. I should have put this in because it would have given me some more energy, but say la vie. In fact, it would have given me two more because I had wasted. No, yes, it would have. If I'd paid this, I would have been up two more times. Uh, let's just, I, mean, I, I, I don't want to be that wasteful. Because again, I, when I was thinking this, I, yeah. All right, so that's all done. So we go on ahead and reveal. I was another jester. Oh my gosh, and an Iago. Actually, I guess we don't get to reveal these, do we? Because this is all just ignored. That just stays there. But anyway, so Jen bid high. So she ends up becoming first player, which means I'll have control over the Wheel of Fate in the future. And we both bid as high as we could. We're tied, and Falstaff breaks the ties. So that means um, I get it, and I will definitely take the jester. And then will Jen will take... Uh, Scroll, I'll take, a, or a letter, and John will take a letter. All right, so that's it, and we can't do this stuff. All right, so we're done with the, now we can go on to actions. Jen is the first player. So, first of all, Jen is going to complete the last quest on Prospero's Island. It takes one time, which she did bank, and one, she needs a map. Jen doesn't have a map. Do I have a map? Yes, I do, and now, Anytime you want, during your turn, people can swap stuff. And Jen can say, hey, look, help me. I, I need that map to finish this quest. And you know what? I'm, I've been kind of greedy up to this point. I've been, you know, getting extra points. So I am, out of the goodness of my heart, I'm just going to give it to her because, you know, I, I, I could, if I wanted to be a real dick, I could say, well, you'll give me one of your extra action cards, but that's a ridiculously unbalanced trade. And since we are all in this together, 
you know, there comes a point where you just need to help each other and stop trying to screw each other. Uh, but I'll, and I'll, so I might hand this over to her and say, hey, do me a favor some point in the future. And she'll say, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll worry about that in the future. So anyway, so Jen's got, she back, she used this, and she completed this quest and Prospero Island. Uh, now, the reward for this quest is Jen gets to put one influence, not from her limited, but one additional one, and boom, look at this. We now have a battle. Whenever you have a situation during the action phase where the total combined hero um, pieces outnumber the bad guys, Richard is kicked out. And so, the way it works is, well, let's say, just for argument's sake, one of these was mine, and then Jen put in the last one, or I put in the last one. The way it would work is, um, in reverse player order, I'd remove one and I'd get one of these black cubes, and then Jen would remove one, two, Jen would remove one, two, and she's the last person standing because she's still got one here. So, if multiple people have influence in an area, they can all share in the rewards. But in this case, Jen cleared Prosper out by herself. So, in the battle, she lost three of her influence, but one remains. That's how she knows she's last person standing. And she just scored three of these. Now, you can trade three of these in anytime you want, anytime, to draw another action card. Or alternatively, at the beginning of the next prep phase, she could trade three of these in to get a victory point um, chip, which these are values one, two, and three. Although there's some quills in there too, so it's kind of dangerous to go for those because you could hurt everybody. But anyway, so that was Jen's first action. She completed a quest and we free Prospero. And now, where's Prospero? Prospero is free! And now, they will not lose hope anymore because King Richard... Now, King Richard's not completely gone. He still has a fortress here. And if we, or Jen by herself, or me by myself, can get four influence over here, so we have more influence than the fortress, we can tear that fortress down and take control of it and become the leader of the land, which is worth points at the end of the game. But in the meantime, Jen also gets this Prospero bonus. From now on, it costs her one less for every level of re-energizing that she would have to spend. So that was Jen's first move. And now my first move is, well, you know what? I'm so inspired by Jen. I'm going to go on ahead and spend my first move putting another influence and Avon is all tied up now. I'm about to completely score Avon. And so now it's Jen's second move. And now Jen was originally thinking, hey, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna send the guy, I'm gonna do the quest. But Jen's thinking, hey, you know what? I wanna get in on this Avon action. So Jen is gonna spend one energy because her, her pirate ship, she's going to sail all the way up here to Avon. And the core action she's going to do for her second action is she is going to put an influence down. And she just triggered the battle. And now both of us are going to benefit from it. So, um, all right. So basically the way we're in reverse turn order. I, so I, um, my forces defeat th this force. So I just got a black token and I bring this back. Then Jen... So she just got another one and, right. So she did this because these are very valuable. Trading them in three for one can be a really big deal over the course of the game. It's a great way to get glory points. So, and now the rest are all me. So I get the other three. And um, I end up getting this bonus, which is I get a free income of scroll or map. And plus, I can use scrolls and maps interchangeably now, either one. So this counts as a scroll or a map for quest results. And Avon has now, her, you know, no longer under the oppressive yoke. Hooray! So we've done it. We've brought hope back to two of the regions. All right, so that was Jen's second action. Now it's my second action. Now I thought I was going to put some more influence here. But now that Jen's moved in, you know what? I think it's time for me to head south. Now remember, it doesn't, it's not my action to actually move. I'm just moving down here so I can be in position to do the quests that were down in this region. So um, this one was the one where I needed to bank some time and I need to be at the star. And I, oh, I need to have some influence here in um, this region. So my second action was I'm putting my other influence here. So because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do the quest in this region and we're starting to do um, battle. Right, so that was my second action. Now it's Jen's third action. Now she will sail over here as she had originally planned to. That cost her another energy. And, right, now to complete this quest, she's going to have to spend one more energy to call in the guy, at which point she will be not have enough energy. So she sailed all the way down here, and then her action is going to be to rest. One, two, so she's got the energy she needs again. All right, so now it's my third turn, and I'm going to complete this quest. Is my, my energy is high enough. I've got 
and influence in the region, and I've got to spend my one banked time, and I've completed this quest, and my reward is I get an energy back, and I get another action card, which is, ah, this is a card I can use anytime I want, wherever I am, to put another influence down for free. And it isn't from my, because I can't put any more influence down normally, but I can use this card to put additional influence down. Nice. Okay, so now it's Jen's last turn. And she's rested up, so she is going to complete this quest. Because remember, if we didn't complete this quest, the quill was going to go up. Jen's having to do all this work by herself. In a two-player game, she can call on the helper. That costs her one energy. But she's still at the star level, which, as you can see, is a requirement. The requirements, you don't have to... This means you have to spend energy. This means the red means you have to be at that level. So to complete this, Jen... Oh, she doesn't have the map still. <sighs> she used her map. To do that other quest. Oh no. Now we're in trouble. Jen cannot complete this quest because I lost sight of the fact that she needed the map for this. We're going to lose. But here's what Jen can do. Jen can say, hey, you know what? You want to hand me that jester? Because Jen could use this jester as a wild card. And now that's a big ask. That's, I mean, because this is so valuable. This is a point at the end of the game. This is all kinds of stuff. But Jen needs this. If she doesn't do this, we don't complete this quest and we fall on the track. So I say, you know what, yeah, I'll give you that. You gotta give me one of your extra action cards. Cause I mean, these are kind of equally valuable. I mean, extra action is about the only thing Jester can't do. And Jen's not crazy about it, but she says, okay, yes. She gives me an extra action, I get, and we've done the swap, and so now Jen can do it. <gasps> Shoot, she still can't do it, she needs two. So Jen says, you know what, hey, I'll, yeah, I'll give you this if you also give me two troops. And I'll say, sure, two troops and a Jester, for getting one action. Um, and so now Jen's got it. Okay, so Jen's at the star. She spent an energy to summon this guy. She now has to spend two energy, one, two. She has to spend, for her, because we're limit, two uh, troops instead of one. She has to give up this letter. She has to give up this, and she's converting this into a map. A hugely wasteful thing, but there's the map, and so she's done it. She has completed Edmund, and so, the nice thing is, Hope in Prospero increases by one. So we've gone from three to four. One of the Iago cards goes away. And the nice thing is, Jen gets to claim this. The more of these you have at the end of the game, the more po uh, during the scoring rounds, the more points you can score. So, um, you know, Jen's pretty happy about that. And Jen just got four points. One, two, three, four. Okay. Wow. And now it's my last turn. And what am I going to do? I've got no more influence I could put around. Now, I, I, I do have energy I could move. Oh, I'm in this, um, all right, I'm in this place, and I can't sell. I'm gonna do this other quest. My energy is high enough, so it costs me one energy and one axe. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to use a double axe. This is my last one. And I get to remove two of Richard's influence cubes, um, and I get to claim these, I get to take them, and um, I get another action card, which is Ah, free energy whenever I need it. Just a quick, a quick pick-me-up. Nice. All right. And so I got another quest. Because remember, whoever has the most quests at the end of the game, that's, there's bonus points for that. And that's it. And now we both could do a fifth action because we both now have one of those extra action cards. But I think we're both going to pass. And so that is the end of the second round. Now, at the, after we're done with our actions, if we had destroyed... if, if um, Right. So if Jen gets... Well, let's see. What's Prospero's uh, fortress? Prospero. There it is, three. If Jen can get four, three more influence, so there's a total of, or combined, we get a total of four influence here. Whoever has the most will get to put a marker over here to indicate that they are the leader of Prospero. Everybody who is involved gets to split up victory points equal to the amount of hope there, but being a leader is worth victory points at the end of the game. So now Jen's got a new task down there, and there's also one in Avon, but the the, the uh, Avon fortress is six. So that's going to be really hard to take that fortress. But the Prospero fortress should be pretty quick to get. Um, but you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there because now you guys have definitely seen enough. Um, what would the next event be? It would be, oh, yeah, it would be King Richard coming back over here and putting one of his cubes back. And the interesting, yeah, yeah. And um, so it'd be tougher for me to take this region. But anyway, so all these are going to slide down. We have a new one that's going to push the quill up. But so far, we're doing okay. We, you know, um, I've got two more points than Jen. Although I think Jen has done the first hard quest. At the end of the game, there's points for whoever did the most hard quest and the most easy quest. Where did her hard quest go? Was it this one? Yes, it was this one. There we go. Yeah. So we've each done four quests, 
And remember, I break ties, so um, I, I'll get the bonus points for most quests unless Jen does more quests than me. We're in a race to do quests first because there's a lot of bonus points. There's bonus points to be had for whoever's done the most quests. Bonus points to be had for whoever is leader in the most regions, which remember means you have to take out these fortresses, which is very time consuming when you could be doing other stuff. And um, there's also most, most quests, most leaders, and what's the other thing we score ourselves on? Most... Uh, oh, just most influence markers, period. Which currently, I've got one, two, three, and Jen's only got one. So currently, I'm leading in um, one of the three metrics. Jen, we're tied in, but I break the tie in one of the metrics. And so far, nobody's worked on the other one. So currently, I'm definitely doing better on points. But one could argue Jen has done more for the world. But I'm going to stop right there because hopefully you guys have a pretty good idea of just all the depth. We have finished two full rounds. The game's going to continue for four more. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the button or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.